Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new season of Head to Head. This is spring, summer 18. I'm Mima Viglezio, and I'm here with the legendary Stephen Jones. Hi, everybody. Hi, Stephen. How Hello, are you? Darling. Very well, thank you. Um, we've just sort of finished the whole sequence of all the shows, over yes. a month of shows now, um, and resting a little. Resting? Yeah, I had, the week resting? I, I had the weekend <laughs> off. Okay, amazingly. good, good. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to um, talk New York. So, uh, Which the seems first like week. a thousand years ago. Yeah, because yeah. it's the first week of the month, so it is uh, five weeks ago, six yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to start talking about Marc Jacob, which was mm -hmm. uh, not only a quite controversial show, but also it is a show you worked with yeah. because you did the turbans. Right? Yes. Was there only turbans on the heads? Uh, yeah, just turbans on the heads. Um, and I've worked with Marc now for... I don't know, 12 years or something like that, starting with Viton um, and then working on his women's shows and his men's shows. So we know each other quite well. Um, and he's a, an extraordinary designer. I mean, he really does know about fashion. He knows. For sure. Every, every, really everything about everything. Um, he's got a lot of experience. You know, he's, he's older and has been through many different guises, you know, from his early days being indep independent, being fired, and then being fired from Jeffrey Bean, yeah. um, and then starting off his own label, then being with Vuitton. Louis Vuitton for 13, 12 years or 13 uh, years. Oh, yeah, maybe and, even more, I think. And turning Vuitton from, not to say a small label, but a not particularly well considered label. Well, it was big, but it huge... wasn't on the radar of fashionistas. No, and he was... started doing ready to wear for them. They'd never done clothing before. It oh, was... no, I know. He turned yeah. it around. And yeah. I remember that uh, J. Lo campaign, remember? Yeah, His yeah. very first campaign was with Jennifer Lopez, yeah. and yeah. it was like, wow, suddenly Vuitton was on the radar. Yeah. But, um, okay, Mark Jacob, you were saying rightly enough that he knows about fashion, he knows about clothes. I also think that Mark Jacob is naughty and likes to make us wonder and and he did it more than ever in this season with just to summarize for our you know uh, people listening he did a show in in the armory as usual but he used the whole of a space so it was huge as everybody said cavernous is that a word cavernous, cavernous. yeah absolutely and he had model walking in one line which means they didn't cross but so it was one line going in one direction and in the sound of silence which means there was no music. So the audience was very far from the model and from each other. Uh, so the model was tiny things in the middle. Their steps were very audible. So you could hear boom, boom, boom. And it was a sort of grated hits of himself. So it's as if Mark was saying, F you, um, I'd done it before. So I've done, um, oversized before, I've done capes before, I've done flowery dresses before, I've done it before. However, however, which is what someone else did it and we're going to go into that, however, it sounded and it looked a little bit like sad, uh, a little bit too much self-referential and a little bit like a goodbye. Oh. So you were with him backstage, you know, Probably things that we don't know help us out of here. Say hello, wave goodbye. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, that's a, 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 a great point of view. Um, for me, I see things differently. Yes, it, in a way, it was a greatest hits, but it's the same situation that hits every designer. I mean, Mark is not 21, um, and neither is it supreme. Um, he has done so many different things. He's done so many different looks for his own label and for other people, for, for Vuitton as well. And he's in the same situation, of course, now that in a way that John is at Margiela, in the way that maybe Armani was 10 years, 15 years ago. It gets to a certain level. What's the message you want to give from the clothes? Um, and I think it was a little bit of the greatest hits, but I think Mark really wanted to show somehow having a good time. And I, yes, absolutely, there were adventures into ugliness. Beforehand, we were talking about an orange check wool jacket. Yeah. 
Um, That's a bit Pradesque, the adventure yeah, and the, uh, uh, I mean, and it's very Miutra, and he always said that she is his hero. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say that he would say that's his Miutra coat. Mark's two big influences are Miutra Prada and Ray Kalkovo yeah. come to Gossel, yeah. and he channels them quite frequently, but will always say, um, I mean, it is not cultural appropriation from them. No, He's absolutely, I didn't say that, well, no, he, I agree. He, he will absolutely give, give credit. Um, and it's interesting when you see this in comparison with the other designers in New York, because there genuinely was a huge excitement within the collection when you were there. I have to say... The uh, Marx collection. Yeah. But can I just, sorry, quickly interrupt you here for one second, because I need your take on this. I thought that there were things in this almost reminding of who he has been. And he's been oh, yeah. a great creative person with amazing ideas. Absolutely. I thought that there was a little bit of nostalgic appeal and I didn't see the I didn't see the showing of his things in a renewed way. I didn't find this it's very hard to say that about Mark Jacobs and forgive me Mark, but I didn't mm, see it very relevant. Just please contradict me because I want to understand what I missed here. You know, I think it gets to a point in every designer's life when they have done so much that actually trying to be fashionable yeah, or sense. trying to be relevant is just sort of ridiculous. Like who would want to try and like, of all the different things you've got this season where you've got to make sure that the money is okay, that the design is, is okay, that hopefully you're having a good time creating it. And being relevant is something, in a funny way, that absolutely the world outside, maybe yeah. the fashion world wants, but are you, are you striving to be relevant? I think that's sort of a bit desperate. Well, I agree to disagree <laughs> because I think Relevance so it's is all 60. that matters. So I want fashion and not clothes, as we yeah, say, yeah, yeah. otherwise why yeah. bother doing a fashion yeah. show? But then if it's not relevant, what it will not be it? seen in the street. I mean, yeah, yeah. nobody will wear it, nobody yeah. will sell it. So what, what point is it? I mean, I think, I think it, it absolutely does have a relevance. Um, I think whether Mark is worried whether it's relevant or not is, is not really a huge issue from, for him. No, it doesn't. Move, it doesn't. Move, moving away from that slightly, I have to say, what was extraordinary was the fact that the girls went out to no music in the way that pre 1970s all shows were done without music. Yeah, all but the not in cavernous. I mean, it was no, no, no. I mean, with uh, chairs uh, and moquettes. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and everybody smoking and talking all the way through <laughs> the show as, this as was well, by the way. So creepy. Yeah, yeah. Were it, you in the audience or backstage? I was, I was backstage. And the girls were absolutely terrified because normally the oh, music, really? yeah, yeah. Normally the music sort of propels them along and sort of makes this slightly artificial bubble. What they were really conscious of was that everybody was really looking at them. But far away. No, everybody was really looking. They felt as though they were, you know, in a job interview or something <laughs> like that because the contact bet between the audience and the model was so extreme yeah. because there was no music. That's how they felt anyway. Yeah, but at least they didn't have them very close. Yeah, yeah but I think, the oh, I, think, I think the distance it doesn't really matter. Re really matter. You know, they actually, they did walk around the edge, first of all, and it was for the finale. They all walked down the centre as we see mm. now. And that was when the um, music started. And this was when, I think it was Norma, um, yeah, it was, was opera. It was um, playing, and that was a fantastic um, finale, and very, very powerful with all these colours. And it's very interesting to see this in relation to the rest of New York Fashion Week, because at the beginning of the week, um, on the, I think, almost the first day, the Alexander Wang show produced lots of interesting things and he's very much about social media and about being now and about being relevant absolutely and that, yeah, that's not what and, and that's not the relevance that interests me i must yeah, say and, and and that's and that's his his whole world yeah. mark was the last show and most of the journalists i spoke to in fact breathed a sigh of relief and because they said at last something creative in new york I lost something individual, yeah, I, mean, I lost something with a point deny, of view. You can't deny that Mark Jacobs is a great creator, a great mm -hmm. producer of ideas that become closed. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I felt, 
maybe it's the silence, maybe it's the venue. I felt sadness. And Mark has always made fun of himself, made fun of people. It was always yeah. some, this tongue taken... in cheek. And this was so sad. And you're like, in, in a time where the rumors are that he's leaving, the rumors are that his brand is over, the rumors are, you know, the, 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 the flotation, the stock exchange never materialized and the CEO left. I mean, there have been a lot of, you know, troubling moments for the brand. You do this, what are you telling me? Are you making fun of myself or are you, are you making fun of yourself or are you really living, you know? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about the business size of Mark Jacob. I th Not I doing think, very well. I th yeah, I, I know, and there's problems with LVMH, and they have a new CEO. Um, however, I was there, and he was just really concentrating on the clothes okay, and good. on the girls. That's and, and that's thing. what he was doing. Because I think in a funny way, that maybe that's... It's very interesting when you see designers, whether it was so many designers, so many different pressures, and eventually all they can do is just design the clothes and do the fittings and do it to the best of their ability. Because after a while, you realize you cannot control the image, you cannot control the stores, you cannot control so many different things, which is why Raph left from Dior and went to Calvin Klein, which was a fantastic show in New York, and I know one of your favorites. Yeah, but one last thing on Mark Jacobs, because it touches you directly at the turban. So oh, yeah. it's been said that he was referencing um, him, he's and Kate Moss's uh, hosting of the Met. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Where he famously put her in a, in a, in a turban. In yeah, my turban, yeah. In yeah. your turban, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But was it, uh, I mean, what was the brief? We were That's fantastic, yeah. by the way, the two yeah. Hadid sisters yeah. in those turbans. That's yeah. really beautiful. We were talking about wrapping fabrics on people's head. We did a great collection for, the, for um, this winter's collection, which was all the, the hip hop hats that we did in the knitted the last hat. collection yeah yeah was, which was by the way fantastic <laughs> and mark is very i hadn't worked with him for a few seasons and he was really into working with me again and we were talking about hats and we were talking about the most simple of hats mm -hmm. and the most simple of hats is it's a piece is a piece of fabric ra wrapping around your head and it exists in every society and we actually started to work on this in july mm -hmm. And every couple of days, I would produce another turban for him. But so Bigger, are they really wrapped or are they made into hats that look like... Let me tell the story. Okay, okay so, sorry. So we were making turbans yeah. every couple of days and then sending him pictures and FaceTiming. And he was saying, no, that is not exactly what I want or that's too oh. big or that's... A, it was a very, very difficult thing to do. And um, eventually, I could see, you know, a month later... So now we're in 30, sam 30 samples later, <laughs> um, it was not working. So I said to Mark, I think I need to come to New York and work with you directly. So we did. And I sat a girl down and I took biases of fabric and I started to, to wrap a girl's head and I was doing it in front of him. That's and, fantastic. And, and, right. and he said, this is how we need to do it. So I did 60 turbans for him in four days before the show. So, so they were all they were all wrapped and, and then fixed the it. Girls, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you fixed them on the. You fitted. Them. So basically, what happened? We sort of wrapped them softly. Yeah. Before the girl tried them on, then I adjusted them on each girl separately to suit the lines of her face. Yeah. And then they were sewn. They were sewn. Oh, so the, I was going to ask: Is there it any all, sewing in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And then was the choice of the accessory on it, like the the jewel or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And then we put that on afterwards. Yeah. That was you. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you? Two yeah, and Mark, again. me, uh, uh, well, Mark, um, Katie Grant, who's the stylist, yeah. and myself. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're the best part of the show. I think those turbans are really Thank good, you. and especially the orange one that yeah, yeah, falls yeah, on the side. towel. Yeah. That was actually what inspired by, it, we call that the towel, because oh, so that beautiful. was, funny enough, the technique of wrapping for this was the same as Kate Moss's at the, at the Met. At the Met. Yeah. When she was in my studio in London, I, and I pinned up various turbans for her, and she came in and I tried them on her and she said, mm, that's not exactly what I want. She said, you know, my favorite turban is when I get out of the shower and I turn to put a towel Couldn't on my head. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she did that for me and then I kept it. And so that was slightly the technique it, for this It's very, turban. very nice. But she's gorgeous in this. Well, um, that was very interesting. So did you want to talk about 
rough. Yeah, um, it One of was my a favorite show. Yeah, of it the was a fantastic show. People I mean, said it's it's more of the same, but I'm so sick. It of is more of the same. But he's that's establishing what it his be. handwriting. Exactly. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, and it should. Be, Say, for example, Alessandra Michelia at Gucci, it's always the same. Because within be. this world of fashion, you have to carve out the little area that you're going to occupy. Couldn't agree more. And in fact, I mean, these could almost be the same patterns as last season, but in different fabrications. Um, but they look great. And maybe we knew about them first season. There are a whole load of people who are just starting to click onto Calvin Klein for the first time in 15 years. Exactly. And, I mean, we, and in three years, there will be more people and more people. We see the everything genius, and we think the that the rest of the world sees everything. Yeah. No, yeah. the rest of the world doesn't see everything. There is time to establish yourself. I think Raf is very creative as well. I think he found- I have to say, Raf loved Mark's show, by the way. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> I think Raf found and... this calling in there where he's given total freedom on everything, you know, the whole image of the brand, including that amazing store that he just did in, on Madison Avenue yeah. with scaffoldings and, you know, and, and, and he's establishing the Americana style for Calvin Klein. Somehow, somehow this is great because this has the authority and the simplicity that he has in his own men's line that he did not have at Jill and did not have at Dior. And somehow he's sort of come home and this is, I, I don't know, it, it, it just is very, very close to his menswear collection and that... Which is what it has best, yeah. yeah what, which well, that's say I thought that it's Dior and especially his Jill were probably the... No. Yeah, they were great, but, Jill was but it's not as good as on. this. I mean, yeah. that was then, and I think this is fantastic. This is perfect. That green skirt is genius. This is a perfect wedding between the designer and the brand is designing yeah. for, yeah. if you see what I'm trying yeah. to say. And the country it belongs to and... and and when people, the only thing they have to say is that it's the same. First of all, it's not, because if you compare them, as you say, you know, the fabrics, some cuts, you know, the skirts, they were not in the first one. It's like, it's so funny. Oh, he's doing t-shirts this season again. Well, what do you expect him to do? You know, he's doing clothes, and there's certain the things that he's doing clothes <laughs> yeah. that people want to wear. Did you, people have to you work on. with him, right? But at Dior only. You, yeah, I worked at Jill. Working. No, I, I worked at Jill with him. Okay. Um, and we'd known each other socially for a long time. I worked at Jill and then at Dior together. But no, I didn't work with him on this collection. There, were, there was nothing yeah. on the hats. So. Yeah, but there was, there was for his men's collection. He did do some do some hats in New York. And you did them? No, I didn't. Or with someone else. Yeah, someone else. So another one who did a sort of great hits because he was celebrating 20 years in fashion was Jeremy Scott. Yeah. And I must say, I am one of those that are like, oh God, you know, these Barbie dolls, these women treated like this. I'm, I've always been one of those that, oh, Jeremy Scott, I really don't get it. Well, this time it's, it's totally not my style of clothes, but this time I mm. thought it was really, really smart mm. because by doing his great hits, he showed that, again, you know, he was a visionary 20 years ago when he was doing um, sportswear, when he was doing neon colors, when he was doing, um, you know, diversity on the catwalks, celebrities on the catwalks, you know, inclusion of everybody and, and mm -hmm. not only the rich and thin, as someone said. And I thought it was done... And white. Mm. And white, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was done really well. And so for once, I feel like saying in French, chapeau, because he, he had fun in doing it. He said in an interview that it was very hard to go back to his cartoons and his, you know, old, you know, um, cat sweaters and, and rework them mm -hmm. in a modern way, yeah. which is what I missed a little bit in what we were talking before. With Mark, yeah. And I thought, I thought it was extraordinary. Extraordinary ugly for me, but extraordinary yeah. as far as fashion goes. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot left out as well. For example, there isn't the gold lame outfits that he did in that second collection he showed in Paris when all the girls yeah. came out in one high heel and one low heel. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, person, I didn't remember that. The person who wore that was Izzy Blow. But, um, yeah, I think it was a great collection. I, I, I worked with him when he was in Paris, and I've done some things for Moschino as well. And this was just a great thing about in, enjoyment of clothes or something. It looks as though he's having a good time. And ultimately, I mean, it's funny that you say that. He said that, I did. It was you the didn't. hardest collection ever. And it looks as if he had 
fun. Yeah. Fun yeah. and fun. Yeah. And so it's like when, when an actor gives a, an amazing performance and it's like effortless and then they say, well, yeah, it wasn't effortless at all. Mm -hmm. I think there is a merit mm -hmm. in that, right? Yeah. But it's interesting, we're talking about Jeremy Scott and also about Mark. And we actually wonder who is going to be wearing those clothes out on the, because we talked about relevance and everything. But actually the, the ones that will become extremely relevant is um, Calvin Klein and Coach. That's the other. It's funny you mentioned Coach. I have in my hidden notes um, a little word which says Coach because it was also one of my favorite yeah. um, shows of the season. And it was in the line of Calvin Klein. Like, you know, there's this Americana, you know, cool, girl, but who knows about fashion and what, what Stuart Weavers is doing to coach is just incredible. It's amazing Stuart and he's got a great, yeah, great team and it's somehow the, the label of the moment. And in relevance to, to, to Mark, in the way that Mark Jacobs did Mark by Mark, coaches have taken over that yeah, the contemporary, the contemporary level thing. of prices. Yeah, yeah. Even if the fashion is not that accessible, it's, it's still quite expensive. It's still quite expensive. I mean, it's not for everybody. Absolutely not. But it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, and it's really it's well funny done. How and this is styled by Carl Templer, by the way, um, who also styles Dior, for example. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it Carl Templer? I yeah, should have known yeah, that. Sorry. Yeah. But what, and that brings me to say that when Stuart was at Loewe, yeah it wasn't the right match. No. And no. he's a great designer and it just didn't take off while J.W. Anderson turned it around in one season and Stuart at coach, it's the right match. So I also think that it's not only about a designer adapted to a brand, adapting to a brand or its DNA or what was before. It's about... The two things equally, yeah. absolutely. And of course, before then he was at Mulberry and before that he was at Vuitton because originally he was a handbag designer. And yeah, he but he was never doing ready to wear it. No, 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 yeah. no, but he was a bag designer. Um, and so then his move he's a home to. Home at coach. Yeah, uh, and it works really, really well. It's a, a, a beautiful collection. Was he at Vuitton with Mark? Yeah, yeah. He was a, a handbag okay. designer when he was there. Like uh, and, Alessandro uh, Michele, he was yeah, a handbag yeah, designer. Yeah, yeah, and did some of the most successful bags. Um, I, think, I think that was a really good show. The only thing. Um, who is the only designer? Maybe he wasn't in New York, but there are not. Maybe he did make boys and girls walk together because when they do the genderless shows and they mix men and women, but then everybody does a section of men in between, which I think it's not really mixing. Was that Stuart Weber? That was a coach that made them walk together, or maybe it's not. Sorry, I'm. I, I don't think so because sure we're seeing things in no, sequence now, and it's them, a mix yeah. of boys and girls. But they don't walk out together. But anyway, I thought I thought it was one of my favorite uh, shows of a season in New York. That was a pretty weird because they had many people that left. Mm. Yeah, and I think when we look at these clothes, it's interesting that they're separates as opposed to looks, which are then put together to make one look. Um, you know, it's the combination of all those pieces which make things interesting, which make things go very well. I mean, it's very, very well styled. You know, that top with the bottom with the bag with the shoe. Yeah. They haven't been designed to go together, exactly. but they're put styling. together at the, yeah. uh, at the last moment. But it's also very smart because then when things are in store, there's everything, something for everybody because yeah. you buy it and I mean, this is how, how people wear clothes. Yeah. 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 But certainly people, American designers, leaving and going to Paris was almost a more important story than what the designers themselves showed. Yeah. yeah. So what's happening there? What do you think is going to happen to New York? Well, you know, it will continue. And there's certain important designers who are still there, like Mark Jacobs, like Alexander Wang, like Coach. Um, but it's extraordinary how Paris has still retained its crown after 300 years. It is still the top as far as fashion is concerned. But you know, the now, in, in a way, fashion is France's ultimate expression in the way that you could say, I don't know, what's America's ultimate expression? Military power? <laughs> to think that. That's a little bit hard, but yeah, I see what you mean. We were but, saying you know, before. Ev like, everybody, like, you know, whether watches it's for Switzerland, you know. Yeah, yeah, watches for Switzerland. But, but what is it for Britain? I don't know. Language. Oh, oh. Language, the English language, I think. 
Anyway. Um, Shakespeare, yeah. <laughs> no, in fashion it's probably creativity and, and yeah. daring. We will talk about this probably in our, in our London. But there's Alta Zora, Tom Brown, and who else? Rodarte. Yeah. yeah. Rodarte. Yeah. yeah. But again, and that's what I wanted to say. You know, when Tom Brown goes to Paris, and he did an incredible show, we're talking Tom Brown, niche brand, but great creator. So probably there's no fear of not standing out. But when Proenza, they, they come to Paris, they're taking a risk because maybe they want to be where fashion should be, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're competing. Yeah, they have to up their game. Incredible brands. So, yeah. and, and, and do I exactly remember? And, you know, and it's bigger and there are many or many that are worth discussing. Absolutely. While in New York, they were... <coughs> like among the top, so I don't really understand. Is it because buyers give you more attention? You know, I understand Tom Tom Brown. Yeah, by yeah. The way, and, for him, Paris, and, and so. for him, my God, what a challenge! Because he showed last Tuesday. So the first show in the, the day was Chanel. Then it was Miu Miu, which is Prada money. Then it was him, and then it was Louis Vuitton, which is, you know, head of LVMH. So when you're going really against the big boys, you've got to watch out. And I think the other American designers didn't realize how competitive Paris. It, visually it is because of fantastic designers. Yeah, and fantastic money. Yeah, yeah. By the way, so, mm -hmm. you know, because also Paris, someone was telling me, some young designer once told me it's not only about... Uh, choosing to stay in London, it said in Paris, even if you do the same thing, it's going to be much more expensive. Oh, God, you yes. know, the venues are more expensive, the, the, I mean, not, I the in Alexander Paris. the Betak are more expensive, you know, oh, yeah. and, and the competition. So sometimes, like when, when, when Lee and Stella, they come to Paris, was also to show we have arrived, you know, mm -hmm. we can afford it and yeah. we can be there. Yeah. But for young, and I, so I don't understand some American designer where in New York they were the few standing out with the Mark Jacobs and now the, the, the Calvin Kleins and now well, suddenly you know, they're competing with Givenchy and Chanel and weird. But it's good in a way, if, they, if, the, if the more senior, the, the, the wealthier designers move to Paris, in a way that leaves room for young designers who are 19 years old and 20 years old to get three well, yeah, friends and, and, and make 10 outfits out of bin liners or a bit of fabric they bought on the market and they'll put them up and down a catwalk and then there'll be an alternative, a new fashion scene. But do you think that New, York, that New York, the CFDA has to be, start to be really worried about what's happening because, I mean, they have, they have now the return of Calvin, which is not only Fantastic. an important brand with an important designer, but humongous money. Yeah. You know, and, and big commerce. So, but Calvin, we hope Cal that Mark stays. But Calvin, Mark, and Coach, three three design companies, who they're very big, cannot yeah. support New York Fashion Week. And there's We're Ralph Lauren as well. Ralph but, Lauren, I was yeah, going there. Ralph Lauren. I mean, Donna Karen's not there. She was the other big one. Um, yeah, she's not there anymore. Yeah, so. but of course she's not there anymore. But there's Alexander Wang. There's a whole another generation of designers. You mentioned Alexander Wang a lot. I, mm -hmm. I have a problem there. Big problem. Tell mm -hmm. me why you consider him so Just cause he's important. It's I think because he's re a really modern designer, doing things in a modern way, and in a funny way, what Jeremy Scott started by having celebrities, by taking photographs of his friends. Yeah, but hold uh, on, Jeremy but, Scott designs fashion, this is Yeah, closed. but 20, 20 years later, what's happened is that somebody like Alexander Wang can come to the floor who does, you know, simpler clothes. Yeah, but it's a little bit the Isabelle Marron thing that mm -hmm. it's going down now a little bit because, you know, it's like, I mean, Jeremy Scott, like it or not, he's a great designer. And Absolutely. He, and he started yeah. so many trends that people, young people don't even know. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, and he's, you know, and he started as a huge outsider, went to Paris from Los Angeles with five pennies in his pocket and he's still standing and doing really well. Yeah, yeah. By the way, designing Moschino now, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexander Wang, no. remember his two seasons at Balenciaga? Ooh. So, but you mention him a lot, so, mm -hmm. you know, and I trust your, I trust your... I don't know, he just eye. seems to, he's a sort of a cipher or a totem for the modern world, in a funny way, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but he has to be careful because now you have many others doing that better. Yeah. Shane yeah. Oliver, you know, and, mm -hmm. and even, you know, the, the Vetmore, you know, it's like... Absolutely, but he's the American version of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the problem. Mm.
So, New York struggling to survive, or how was the atmosphere? How was the, how the was vibe the atmosphere? there? You know, the money still is there, and the big editors are there. You know, Anna Winter is there, and Grace Coddington, and Glenn to Bailey. And they all travel there as well. And all the British editors go there. Yeah. So it is a big thing. It does represent something, but, you know, the power is shifting. What there needs to be is a whole new generation of designers. I mean, there was a whole generation of new designers coming up, but financially, they all started to fail. You in know, New York, yeah, in, New York. yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they did not have an easy ride, and I don't exactly know how they're going to work that out because historically, American designers could exist because they could sell to a hundred American department stores. They didn't have to export, but those department stores are all on really tough times now because everybody's buying Huge on the time, yeah. on the internet. I mean, the when we think of Bergdorf Goodman, which is owned by Neiman Mark, Group, Neiman yeah. Mark, Neiman's Boot, uh, horrendously in debt. Nordstrom's in debt. Saks has been sold to, you know, all of I the... I think Barnes is doing a little bit better because they try to be relevant in the way they yeah. sell fashion. I mean, Bar Barney's went through their financial yeah. nightmares 15 yeah. years ago. Um, but all of them, and the independent boutiques can't pay their bills. So that yeah, support, yeah, <laughs> that all that support which would come for young designers, um, it is not there. So do young designers need the CFDA? No, in a way not, because they're going to have to invent their own new system, which will make the C CFDA, who will probably look after the more senior established designers. Which I think could be said for the PFC, the Camera della Moda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there needs to be a whole other generation talent. of young people who say, fuck you. Yeah. Is that a good word to end our... <laughs> First head oh, I love of the you, season. darling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you soon.